Hi guys, it's Sheena from Teton Raptor Center and I'm here to give you all this week's patient updates. So let's go ahead and get started. To kick things off this week, we've got a Northern Harrier. This is an uncommon bird for us to get, but they are very common around Wyoming and Idaho. This bird was admitted from St. Anthony with a fractured pelvis. Otherwise, the bird is healthy and is doing well in the ICU. Um, you can tell that this is a Northern Harrier because it has a facial disc. It's one of the only hawks that has a facial disc. And you can actually tell male versus female in these birds. However, in this particular case, this is a juvenile, so you wouldn't be able to tell until it grows up. Next up is Swainson's Hawk 83, and this juvenile hawk came in from Idaho Falls with head trauma. We are confident that this bird can make a full recovery just because his head trauma is mild, and he's actually bypassed the ICU and is living in the PCU and is able to fly around in a small enclosure. Here we have Swainson's Hawk 81, and this adult bird was actually illegally shot by an unknown person in Rigby, Idaho. The gunshot wound left the bird with a broken radius in her wing, and thankfully the bird does not need to have surgery for the fracture to heal. However, she will be in a wing wrap until that wing is fully healed. Due to the lead fragment that remains in her wing from the gunshot, she is exhibiting some signs from the lead since birds can get lead poisoned. Although her lead level is lower than what a classic poisoning case is, she still is exhibiting symptoms and is on supplemental oxygen and getting fluid several times her day just to keep her well hydrated. Next up is American Kestrel 81, and this bird came in from Victor, Idaho with slight trauma to the left wing. Thankfully, there are no broken bones and she's comfortable in a body wrap in the ICU. Next up is Black-Billed Magpie 731, and this juvenile is doing really well after her surgery for a broken leg. She's actually able to get around really well on that broken leg. It's wrapped up in a cast, and inside her leg is actually a metal pin so that the bone can heal in alignment. And her attitude is super feisty. She's really interested in food. And so these are great signs that we look for after a bird has come out of surgery and just to make sure that they're um, acting wild. Here we have American Crow 722, and this bird came in from Drake's, Idaho, and is healing in a wing wrap due to a broken ulna in her left wing. Things are looking really good in the healing process. We took new x-rays this week, and um, although everything isn't perfectly healed, um, we're at a good point in the healing process. Uh, remember this bird is living with the other crow and they're both little troublemakers in there, which is exactly what we want to see in a wild bird. Um, so these birds are doing well so far. Here we have the other American crow. This is 721. This is the bird from Jackson that had its leg stuck in a fence and broke its leg. Um, it's healing really nicely and we've taken post-op radiographs which indicate nice alignment in the bone. Um, things are looking really good. The bird is able to get around really well even though that leg is broken. We've even put a little shoe on the bottom of his foot so that we can keep his toes in a much more natural position. And so far so good. Next up is Red-Tailed Hawk 721, and this adult came in from Casper, Wyoming with a fractured metacarpus. Remember, that's the um, small bone near the tip of the wing, similar to a hand in a human. Uh, the wing was surgically repaired, and it is healing perfectly so far. Um, we're really excited about this one. She's got great extension by her elbow and by her wrist, and new x-rays show that the healing process is coming along nicely. Next up is Common Raven 614. This is the imprinted non-releasable bird that's going to be transferred to the World Bird Sanctuary in St. Louis, Missouri later this month. We're really excited to be able to provide him with a forever home and are simply just waiting on his final test results to clear him for out-of-state travel. Here we have Red-Tailed Hawk 610, and this is the bird that's recovering in a flight barn enclosure from a broken pelvis. We do plan to begin flight conditioning in about a week. Last but not least is Bald Eagle 210, and we actually took this bird out of the flight barn for a little bit just to get another round of x-rays and evaluate her wing a little bit, get a good feel on it. 
We sent those x-rays to our vet to see what their feedback is regarding her prognosis, just because although she's able to fly, um, her flight ability is actually quite poor and um, the humerus is fully healed at this point. So we're just looking to see what our other options might be. All right, that's all we've got for this week. Thank you guys so much for learning more about our birds and I look forward to talking with you all next week. If you'd like to do your part to help keep wild birds wild, you can check out our website at tetonraptorcenter.org to make a donation. Bye.